what is the best team I can build? This is by far the most common question I get on both YouTube and Twitch. This is a really important question, especially because building a character takes a ton of resources and maxing a character can take weeks or even months. So it feels really bad if you've built the wrong characters. Luckily in this video series, I'm going to cover really good teams for you so you don't have to worry about those problems. We're not only going to look at the characters you need and how to build them, but also how to play the team for maximum results. I'll also give you some potential variations you can make, but if you're missing some key character roles, then make sure to check out the other videos in the series. You'll also want to be subbed with the notifications on, that way you'll know more of the best team comps with different characters in the future. The team we're talking about today is Reverse Melt. This is an extremely strong and relatively easy team to build. It only needs 4 star characters, but it can be enhanced by certain 5 stars. The real beauty of this team is that 2 of the characters are given to you for free, 1 is obtainable through the Star Glitter Shop, and so the only RNG you have to face is when rolling for the last member. To play this team, you'll need Kaya, who you get at the start of the game, Shangling, who you get from beating Floor 3 of the Abyss, Bennett, who you get from the Star Glitter Shop or get from Wishing on a Random Banner, and Rosaria, who you have to get from Wishing. This team takes advantage of the Reverse Melt reaction, as well as the unique fact that Rosaria and Shangling's burst have no internal cooldown. And if you haven't heard of internal cooldown or ICD, it just means that only some of the hits of elemental damage can actually cause reactions. The standard internal cooldown is 2.5 seconds or 3 hits, whichever comes sooner, and those factors are not mutually exclusive. And if that's diving a little too deep into the game mechanics, don't worry. Rosaria's burst and Zhongling's burst ignore this rule completely, allowing both of their bursts to cause a reaction on every single hit. So this whole team is designed around this interaction to take advantage of the 1.5 times damage boost from Cryo reacting with Pyro, However, you do get instances where Pyro reacts with Cryo, dealing two times the normal damage instead. So now that you understand an overview of what the team aims to do, let's go into how to play the team. The general rotation is to use the skills and burst in this order. Bennett, Shangling, Rosaria, Kaya, and then use Bennett, Rosaria, and Kaya's skills again, and then start the rotation over. But here's a more detailed breakdown. Start with Bennett Burst, then Shangling Burst to snapshot Bennett's buff, then use Shangling's skill, then Rosaria's skill, which gives your entire party a crit rate buff, then use Rosaria's Elemental Burst to snapshot Bennett's Burst's buff, then use Kaya's Burst and Skill. You've now used all of your Elemental Bursts, so now you switch to Bennett to use Bennett's skill, then switch to Rosaria to use Rosaria's skill, and finally switch to Kaya to use Kaya's skill. Now on the second rotation, it's very common that you'll need a little bit more energy on everyone in order to start the rotation over in full again. So if you don't have full energy to start the full rotation over again, here's what you do. After completing your first rotation and having less than full energy on all your characters, you first want to do Bennett's burst, then Rosaria's skill, then Kaya's skill. If this seems like a lot to absorb right away, just remember this order. Bennett, Shangling, Rosaria, Kaya. And so when Shangling's skills are on cooldown, the order would then be Bennett, then Rosaria, then Kaya. And you may not think that's a big deal, but the order is actually very important. Because doing the rotation this way will allow both Rosaria's double hit skill and Kaya's skill to melt off of Bennett's skill. But if you use Kaya first, you won't get all the melt reactions like you did from before. The reason the second example is doing less damage is all due to elemental gauge theory, which is too much to get into right here. But the gist of it is that some skills eat more of an enemy's applied elemental aura than other skills, so characters are not created equal when it comes to triggering reactions. But the TLDR is that when Shangling's skills are on cooldown, just use Bennett's skill, then Rosaria's skill, then Kaya's skill, in that order. Now with different team variations, there can be some nuances, but generally the rules are the same. Use Bennett's Burst, then use Shangling's Burst to snapshot the buff from Bennett's Burst, and then just use your Cryo character's skills and bursts. Now of course you are free to discover some of the nuances and the reactions for yourself, but honestly, if you just do the general order like this, you'll be set. 
So now that we know how to play the team, let's talk about how to build the characters. The first party member we're going to go over is Rosaria, and she's producing all the big numbers that you see on this team. For artifact sets, you want to go with a four-piece Lava Walker set. Now, this sounds really weird, but the enemies are going to be constantly affected by Pyro, which allows you to do the melts in the first place, and then you always get that 35% damage bonus from the four-piece Lava Walker set. But just to be upfront with you, this domain is a complete pain, and farming for a four-piece Lava Walker set is probably not going to be very fun, so let me give you some alternatives. Four-piece Guild of Dreams is also a really good set for Reverse Melt Rosaria. And Guild of Dreams and Deepwood Memories both come from the same artifact domain, and both of them are really good artifacts that you'll probably want to farm anyways. However, something like a two-piece Noblesse and two-piece Blizzard Strayer works just fine as well. Just use whatever artifact set has the best substats overall. And speaking of substats, you want to aim for about 2 to 300 elemental mastery, and then as much crit rate, crit damage, attack, and energy recharge as you can get. The reason you want the elemental mastery is because it significantly increases the damage of elemental reactions, and remember Rosaria is doing a ton of melts, so she gets a lot of value out of this. That's why for her weapon, the Dragon's Bane is a really good choice. This spear gives you elemental mastery as a substat, which is really good because it's going to amplify the melt damage by quite a lot. Plus, the passive increases the damage you deal against enemies affected by Pyro, which will be all of them. The next party member we're going to talk about in this team is Bennett. For Bennett's build, the four-piece Crimson Witch is a really good artifact set to go for. Bennett's elemental skill has a really short cooldown and can really take advantage of the four-piece set to amp his damage even more. But the Noblesse set is also great on him too, and you may already have that on him anyway. However, another option is the 4-star artifact set, the Instructor set. This is a really good option because it gives your party 120 additional elemental mastery, but you are sacrificing his damage to run this set. Whichever artifact set you end up going for, just make sure you have enough energy recharge to use Bennett's burst off cooldown, which is a little over 180 on average. As far as weapons go for Bennett, there's a lot of different choices you could go with, but I personally like the Lion's Roar, Favonia Sword, or the Festering Desire. The next member we're going to talk about is Shang Ling. Our little chef girl is just going to use her standard build, which is a four-piece emblem of the Severed Fate artifact set, with lots of energy recharge, crit rate, crit damage, and attack. It's important to know that elemental mastery for Shang Ling does not matter here, because she's only around to apply Pyro, not to trigger the melt reactions. Therefore, building elemental mastery on her would be a waste in this team composition. As far as weapons for Shangling, the catch is pretty good, but I really like Favonius in this build because of the extra energy recharge and the extra energy particles. The catch synergizes super well with the emblem of the Severed Fate set, allowing Shangling to do more damage, but because she's not triggering any reactions, that's not so important. What is important, however, is making sure Shangling can get her burst off cooldown, and the passive from the Favonius Lance greatly helps with that. And for the final member of the team, we have Kaya. Kaya is pretty flexible in terms of artifact sets. If you're not running Noblesse on Bennett, then run it on Kaya. Otherwise, a two-piece Noblesse or two-piece Blizzard Strayer is perfectly fine, or whichever artifacts have the best substats. As far as weapons go, the Favonius is always a good choice. But the Lion Roar is also pretty nice for him. He can make use of the passive really well because the enemy is going to be affected by Pyro pretty much all of the time. And he also appreciates the extra attack he gets from the weapon substat. Another good option for Kaya is the Aminoma Kageuchi. This is a really nice free-to-play craftable option because it helps Kaya keep his burst up to make sure he doesn't delay any rotations. And just a quick note about Kaya, he doesn't really want a lot of elemental mastery like Rosaria does. This is because Kaya's elemental burst has standard internal cooldown, meaning he only melts one out of every three hits. So because of the internal cooldown on Kaya's burst, he gets zero benefit from elemental mastery on two-thirds of his hits. So it's a lot better to build attack on Kaya than it is to build elemental mastery. So we've gone over the team, how to play it, and how to build the characters. But let's say you don't have all the characters on the list. What are the alternatives? Well, unfortunately, the only alternatives are the Cryo characters. You need Bennett and Shang Ling. But you do have some flexibility when it comes to the Cryo side of this team. Some good alternatives to this team include Ganyu, Shenha, and Chong Yun. All of these characters have the benefit of working off-field and allowing you to trigger more Cryo damage. Ganyu's burst drops a ton of icicles and buffs your team's cryo damage while inside its massive AoE. 
Just note that you don't use her charge shots in this playstyle. Changyun gives your melee characters cryo infusion, which allows them to melt their normal attacks. And Shenha was just totally designed to be a cryo buffing character in general. Now one thing to note about using alternative characters is you want to use ones that are offensive and you typically want to avoid defensive characters like Diona or Layla. The reason is a lot of these defensive characters don't apply that much cryo and Bennett is more than enough to take care of the healing on the team. Now like every team it's not perfect and there are some issues to work around so let's dive into those real quick. The first one you'll need to be aware of is that Rosaria's burst stays in one spot so enemies that jump around or teleport can jump out of its range really easily. And if that happens, pretty much all of your team damage goes down the drain. The other thing to note is that even though this is a 4 star only team, you do want Constellation, specifically Constellation 2 on Rosaria and Constellation 4 on Zhongling. These Constellations increase the duration of both of their bursts by 4 seconds apiece. And while the Reverse Melt team is very strong, especially for using only 4 star characters, maybe it isn't something you can build or maybe it's something you don't want to build. In that case, I've got a playlist with some of the other best teams in Genshin that you can build, ranging from completely free to play using characters that everyone can get, to 4 star only team comps, to some ridiculous 5 star team comps. But no matter which route you choose, they'll all be really powerful and they'll all help you progress through the game so much easier than if you were just to slap a bunch of characters together. And of course I'll update this with more of the best teams you can build in the future. That way if there's a really strong team that uses the characters that you really like, you'll know about it first. I love you, stay awesome, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.